what's the I'm sure you work out with your dad. Like, what's the workout look like for you? I can't expose that. That's my personal workout. Ooh, okay. Hold okay. on, hold on. All right, welcome to the Hidden Gems Basketball Podcast, the place that leaves you with a gym after every episode. Yeah. And we have a special, special guest. This is actually our first high school guest, a man that's destroying, you know, high school basketball, 14-year-old sensation out of Los Angeles, freshman Jason Crow. Man, thanks for being on the show with us, bro. Thank you. Yes, sir. And I'm, I, I got to go over this real quick. I'm, I'm got to give you a background. So you averaged 36 points. You scored 1,295 points. You won a state title with your pops. And you had career highs of 60 points and 51 points, which is crazy. I'm going to drop the bomb. <laughs> but let me ask you, when you hear that, like, how does that make you feel? Like, like all of those accolades in your freshman year, how does that make you feel, bro? Uh, just blessed that God gave me the ability and talent just to uh, go out every, uh, every day and just hoop and do what I love. Yes, sir. Yeah, right. that's that's crazy, man. At 14 years old. So uh Jay, I played for my pops in college, man. Uh, my dad's like my coach my whole life. So to see you playing for your dad, like I, I love to see these stories. But how how was it for you? Like growing up, was he working you out at a young age? And then how is it now, you know, transitioning into high school? How do you like playing for him? Uh just having that father-son connection, it just clicks even better on the court because we both see a game a little bit different, but we see it similar because we both point guards. So sometimes I I I do what I do, and then sometimes I have to uh, back up and then listen to him and do see see what he wants to do. Yeah, he was he was he tough on you growing up? Yeah, and he's still tough on you to this day. Always. Yeah, now that's good, man. Listen to him. You pops knows what you're talking about, and it's gonna get you to where you want to be for sure. The question is: Is when did you start playing? Like, when did you start playing basketball? Uh, i say around, like, four or five. Four or five? Because yeah, like, it, like it, right it, after my dad came back from overseas, that's when I started hooping. Okay, so your dad was playing overseas a little bit when you first started playing. He was playing over – where was he – Uh, what countries was he in when while you were uh, born and starting to learn how to play? Uh, Australia. Okay. And Other it, places, I don't really know, but it was a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, facts. Did you guys travel with him or y'all were back and forth too as well? Yeah, we'll travel with him every now and then. But then uh we uh like last the last year, he just wanted to decide to uh watch me hoop and uh, coach me up at the YMCA. Yeah, and that's what kind of that where I'm transitioning to a little bit is that um I've been hearing about you while I was playing overseas since you've been eight years old. I don't know. Like, you've been hooping. I, like, I've heard, like, you've been nice for a long, long time. So, like, what was that development process like? When did you feel like your game started getting nice? Like, were you, like, very skilled, like, early on, like, six, seven, eight? Or, like, because I heard, like, you were nice, like, at eight and nine when you played for the truth. And we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, I think it was just God-given abilities and uh, blessings all to God. And then all the work that me and my dad put in at Verbum Day, just working on little stuff like right hand lips, because I'm a lefty. So that just came a little bit easier when I caught in court. And you, you were the kid like that used to just be around, like while he was coaching, you know, at Verb, because uh, I know your pops coached there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you the kid that was always there with a ball in your hand, working on stuff with the older guys, like growing up? Yeah, I was always a kid that, like, he used to work out pros, so every time he'd work out pros, he'd tell me to do a little something on the side courts, and I'd just go do it, and then tell him, you know, he'd, like, work me on the side while he working out the pros. Yep. Yeah, them, them the coldest ones. Hey, Ray, know a little bit about that. Ray's dad is – he he coaches for Tulane right now, and Ray's pops has been all over. Like, was it the same for you, Ray, like, kind of transitioning, like, yeah, when you were exactly. in, in your youth too, like, always being around the pros and all those guys? Exactly. Seeing my dad work out his players, you know what I'm saying, and just being in the gym, open gym, just watching and learning. When you had a young age, seeing it, you know what I'm saying, he even got to see it on the international stage, being overseas with his dad, so – He's getting to see the brand of basketball all over the world. So, man, soak all that in. I, I was the same as you, man. Yes. Yes, sir. And then, you know, just a little bit about the family background, too. Um, your pops played at Inglewood, right? 
played at Inglewood High. You have a really, really close relationship, you know, with Paul Pierce. You played for the truth. So you started playing with him in eighth grade? I mean, when you were eight years old, like the truth uh, team? Like, yeah, six or seven. Like six or seven years old. So, like, yeah. just explain, like, you know, how that relationship is because Paul Pierce attends a lot of your games. Honestly, I haven't seen him really show his face like that in games, honestly, until you started coming around. So, like, how did that relationship start? And then, you know, how is it now? Uh, it's always been great because he's like my uncle. So, yeah, he's always around giving me little uh, bits of advice on uh, the game and then even, like, life stuff. So, it's always great to have one of the greats as your uncle or just being around just to come and support you. Does uncle be on your head too a lot too? Like with different situations, like after the games, like how is he? After the game, it's always something. Even if I have a good game, he's always going to say something. <laughs> like what's an example? Like after a game, like say like, all right, let's go to the hot, the career high, 60 points. Everybody like, yo, Crow, dog, you went crazy, bro. Like what is he saying? What's the first thing he's saying when you come up to him? I think when I had 60, I didn't have a lot of rebounds. So he's like, you got to get more rebounds and stuff like that. It's always something. It's always something with them. Yeah. I got to drop the bomb on that. <laughs> That's fire, bro. That's fire. That's fire. Ray, what you got, dog? Nah, so I mean, I was, I'm was i not from L.A., man, but I've been out in L.A. for a long time. Jordan, L.A. kid. You're an L.A. kid. Mm. L.A. basketball has been needing a, that, that buzz again. I feel like they kind of need that guy, and I feel like you kind of on the rise to really kind of bring that L.A. unified back to what it used to be. Um, you know, now you're playing up 17 and under this summer in AAU at 14. People don't realize how hard that is. You know what I'm saying? So we'll, we'll touch on that also. But I see you play with Russell Westbrook's team. Why not? Have you got a chance to meet uh, Russell Westbrook yet? And, and if so, like, has he has he helped you out like Paul Pierce did? No, I haven't seen uh, Westbrook yet. I think he's going to come to PGM, though. So that would be the time where I interact with him. Okay. Yeah. And, and, how, and how is that, bro? Like, you... Because I'm learning the AAU scene. It's way different from when we were playing, right? So I had to really learn. I'm learning with your group, honestly, you know, the the scene. But you are taking an untraditional route the most. You playing as a 14-year-old, you playing up with 17 year A lot of kids play with the age group. They play 15s. They play 16s. Then they finally move on to 17 probably in their last year. What made you decide to do that, you know, and play with 17 so early? Well, I originally was supposed to play with uh... – why not 60U, but I was in Atlanta and then my dad went to a why not practice and saw the 17U team and he said, I think I could fit into this group better than the 60U. So I just believed in him and believed in my work. So I just decided to play up and uh, get with a 17U. Dang. Like when when Pops does that too, like is there any car rides in the, in the car like, yo, Pops? Like you, hey, seventeens. Like yo, I thought I was playing sixteens. Is that combo kind of back and forth or no? Nah, I listened to what he said, but I'm not gonna lie. In my head, I was thinking <laughs> seventeen. I I expect that. Yeah, but I mean, it just kind of goes with the way you play too. Like, there's no fear. You don't get rattled by any moment. I don't ever like your facial expression. Don't change too as well. Like. How, like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, when did that start for you? Did you have early moments in your development where it was like, yo, I'm still trying to figure my figure myself out? And then, or you've always been that kid, like, compose your moments, you know, been the, the composed one out of the group and just always just been composed? I think it's just my confidence in knowing what I could do on the court. That's what keeps me composed and uh, knowing what I could do in certain situations. Yeah, that's, right. yeah, that's crazy. I ain't gonna lie, that ain't that ain't easy. He's so chill and calm about it, like <laughs> sixty ball, forty five, fifty piece. Like, man, I've been hooping my whole life, man. I ain't I ain't had no type of numbers. So it's just like, you know, you talk about the confidence. Where do you think the confidence came from? Just like you think your father helped you, or just you just trust your work from a young age? Because coming as a freshman, I don't care where you playing, man, and who you playing against. To have a sixty piece, you know, playing up against seventeen and under at fourteen, like. I was in your shoes one day, bro. I played up and I was I was nervous as can be. You know what I'm saying? I was young playing against Drew Holiday, these older guys, Brandon Jennings. Like, I was nervous though. Like, how do you so confident and just so calm all the time? I think my my parents, you know, they always try and instill in me, know what you can do on the court and then just do what you can do, control what you control on the court. And that's what I try to do every day. Simple as that. I hear you for sure. 
Man, that's fire. That's fire. And I, you know, I and one thing I really want to touch on, and I'm a, I'm gonna drop this too right here. <laughs> I'm gonna drop the evil laugh because a lot of people, and I, I know you've grown up with this, like people think that LA basketball is dead, and to an extent, I understand why people say that because you know, back in the day, uh, Crow, you know, Verbin Day was nice, Long Beach Poly was nice, Fairfax, Taft. Like, you know about all these teams. And, like, now if I ask a kid, like, yo, like, do you know Fairfax? Like, you know, do you know how good Taft was? Like, people really don't know, right? And a lot of people are going to go play, you know, at prep schools, play in the Valley. But, like, it's only two individuals, and they are they were freshmen. Y'all about to be sophomores now that are still sticking in the roots and playing in L.A. And y'all close with each other is you and Taj Ariza, right, still playing in L.A., like, what does it mean to you, you know, to keep L.A. basketball alive and to continue to play, you know, at the hometown and can continue to show, like, you know, the growth of L.A. basketball? Uh, it means a lot. I think my dad, I was thinking about uh, going, I didn't know I was going to go to Linwood, honestly. But, you know, after he sat me down and told me that Linwood was the move, uh, I was, I was, you know, I knew what to do. I didn't think prep. I think he told me that we could do it other ways just in prep school because overtime Lee was talking about doing something. But, you know, I think if you have the right people around you, it doesn't matter where you're at. Yep. Now you're telling the facts, right? Go ahead. If you can hoop, they're going to find you wherever, man. So, so keep, keep doing your thing on that. But you putting up these big numbers, bro. Let's get to like Jordan and I. We we older man. When we was in high school, like we used to get letters, right? I don't know if y'all still get letters, but we was getting letters sent to the crib. Like, do they still send y'all letters? Like, did the college send you letters? How like how does it work with like getting offers and stuff nowadays? Because if you get letters, I know you probably got a box full at the house already. No, so they, well, I'm I'm young, so they can't contact me yet. So they usually have to contact like a coach or a family member. Ah, that's right. Yeah, you still. So what, at what age can you get contacted? Like sophomore year, junior year? In the sophomore year. Okay. So you got a whole nother year. Mm -hmm. Well, tell tell Pops to get ready and, and get you a, a whole room for the stack and a box of letters you about to get coming in for sure. <laughs> yeah. Nah, that's a fact. Nah, because the bars for sure. Way, way, way up. We already know what type of offers you're going to be getting. Like, you're going to be getting a lot, a lot of offers. But like even your homies, right, that you know are, are do kids still get letters or is it more about the phone, like the phone calls now? Cause like back it's in the, more the phone. Uh, it's more the phone joint. Bro, when and we they can text, they can text now too, like unlimited texts and calls, I think. Mm -hmm. So the letter wave is dead. So nobody in the convos is like, yo, we got the letters like at the crib popping. No, nah, it's usually text or phone call. Dang, Jay, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, we all old heads then for sure. But bro, facts. If I got a letter at the crib, no matter what, if if it was a Duke letter, you would have thought him. that I was attending the school, bro. No matter if they was fully yeah. interested and gave me an offer or not, I'm going crazy for sure. I'm gonna drop the bomb on that too. But just kind of going back to Linwood, when your dad told you it was the move, I just think this is very important for a lot of kids to see. And I've been using you honestly more as a case study with that, you stayed at Linwood. A lot of people are joining forces. I feel like we in the NBA. Everybody's making super teams now. You get what I'm saying? So, like, how was your mentality when you first went to Linwood? Did you think, like, in the first year, we're going to do X, Y, Z, we're going to win a state title, I'm going to average 36 points a game, and we're going to put this school on the map? Like, what was the thought process? Well, state title was all always in the – in the mirror, you know, but I never knew I was going to go off how I did, like with 36 points and stuff like that. But state title was day one. That's what we was going for. Man, that's, I mean, I mean, that's, that's the big time. And then like, talk to the kids too out there. I mean, because a lot of times, you, and you see it too, with social media, a lot of kids follow the cameras. Mm -hmm. That cameras, I went to your first couple of games early on. Them cameras started to climb up. You you honestly could have made a movie the amount of cameras that are in there, you know, by the time the end of your freshman year went. Like, how do you feel like, you know, when you even talk to other kids, you know, because I know kids are probably looking up to you as well. What would you say to them in terms of like, you know, 
being at a school where it's going to really help your game grow and the cameras following you instead of you following them? Uh, I think it's just, you know, it all comes with the work. You got to put in the work in every day so the cameras could follow you and then you could become uh, this star that uh, you want to be. Yep, man, I rock, I rock with it. Max, I, <laughs> I like you, bro. It. You got a bright future, man. I want to I want to see these clips, man. Let these people let these people see these clips. Okay, yeah, facts. We got. I seen, I seen some of your highlights, bro. You coming across half court, letting it just letting it fly like that, huh? Yeah, man. That, that you you work on that every day, or like what's yeah. like what's it like what's a? I'm sure you work out with your dad. Like, what's the workout look like for you? I can't expose that. That's my personal workout. Ooh. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, 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 hold on. What? My bad. Hey. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Hey, yo, he gave I me the bro. That. What? We not showing no workouts. Hold on. Hey, honestly, I'm going to give you credit. And look, I'm first off. New, 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 new hey, world hey, order. Jordan, I'm putting the new tell world Jordan order. Stay out the gym. Trying to get your workout. Hey, yo, honestly, I've never seen a Jason Crow workout. Honestly, and that's that's was that's was fire. That had to have been pops because we came in the era where we didn't show the workouts. What is pops telling you about the workouts? He never wants to show any workouts. <laughs> I really agree with you because then they could take little beats of uh, bits and parts of you know the workout, and then they can get better. But no, I want to keep it to myself. <laughs> Hey. Perfect. <laughs> like that. hey, I like you, bro. Okay. Hey, okay. Great question, Ray. What do you have to that, bro? Have you heard that? I've heard that. No, I've I, heard ain't, I ain't never heard that. You know, nowadays everybody wants, you know, all the highlights, the videos. They want everything to be shown and seen. But nah, stick to that routine, man, and stay that way. Stay in that gym behind closed doors, get your work in, and just keep getting better and keep grinding. Ain't no one got to see the work. Your work going to show in, in your play like it's doing. 36 as a freshman, we coming for a 40 piece this year. So, you know, just keep doing what you're doing. But if Jordan tries to contact your dad and he tries to hit you up and try to come get a workout, <laughs> just keep telling him, no, we, we ain't doing that. Thanks. The party never ends. That bro, that bro, the boy stays in the gym. Actually, you know what's funny? Like, I'm going to put this clip up. You probably low key exposing me because now it's going to be like, Jay, like, you can't come to the workouts now. Then you got more kids saying that, hey, we not filming no workouts. We seen that Jason Crow interview, so dang. I like it, bro. I like it. All right, and then now we're going to get into, you know, some of your breakdown plays. Uh, I got some clips for you to see. I'm going to set that up while we getting that going, but, man. Hey, I like that last answer. That last answer is fire. You gave me some. You gave me chills with that one, bro. I can't even lie to you. The thing is that I've always noticed from you is the distance. So we're going to start off with this clip right here. Drag dribble into a pull-up three. We got to go back to it. Just talk to us about that and the mentality, bro. Like, first off, why the drag out of it? You know, what does the drag do for you first off into the shot? Well, it creates space and lets me get that little step to have my legs into my shot. Is there an area on the floor that you looking for, uh, looking towards when you see two defenders kind of pressing up on you? Because you know you have your uh, your teammate behind you. Mm -hmm. What was the thought process with that? No, I knew I was gonna shoot it because the man in the top he wasn't paying attention, so I just tried to bring that dribble down, and I knew I was gonna shoot it after that. Hold and it, I'm sorry. <laughs> wait. Yeah. Yeah. Let me hear. Yeah. Hey. Ask. Wait. Wait. Can you just take it back to the beginning? Yeah, bet, bet, bet. Right now, he already knows I'm getting a bucket. He knows he's pulling. He got that. His body language is telling. But I ain't gonna lie, Jay, that's crazy, bro. Just to know, <laughs> you said my defender's back, bro. You see how deep you shot that ball? Like, <laughs> yeah, facts, bro. Like, when did this start? Please tell me. You 14. Like so you super comfortable. Me, yeah, super that, comfortable. That tells me, and I've heard this myself is that you've been shooting far your whole life. When did the distance start for you shooting this far out? Because usually kids, they can't, their form isn't there too, to shoot it that far. Like they're going to push shot it. It's not going to be there. So please talk to me about that, please. Well, I've been shooting that since I was like six or seven grade. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you hit them with the drag. Were you actually trying to go to the, 
to the right side of the floor because the right side of the floor is open. Yeah, I, I was the thought process. The floor. And I, they packing the paint, so I it has to be a three ball just to open up. Okay. All right. Dang. Hey, uh, did, did you did you hit one before that? That was like a yeah, it was back to back. Oh, okay, yeah, for sure. It was oh, feeling good. You could tell the clip was right right there. You could tell. Oh, we going back to back way, like Drake way, too. Way we going back to back. Here's a back to back clip right here. We're gonna show this first one right here. Hey, uh, Fr wait, front to back three. Hold on, this is NBA range though. This floor ain't the same floor as Linwood. Yeah, that's at the kick. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 further than that's at the yeah, Golden that's One Center. That's this is at the Golden One Center now. Hey, you, Steph, Dame, <laughs> maybe Kyrie on a good day. Dot, oh, pro dot process, front to back, you kind of set him up. You kind of bait him. You see that you're backing up. What, what What's the read right here? Well, he was kind of sagging back, giving me a little bit of disrespect, so I had to shoot it. <laughs> Jay, wait, go back. Hey, he's kind of sagging back, a little disrespect. He's in, bro, that's the NBA three. He's guarding it. Like, he, the kid ain't used to playing on the NBA court. He hit the high school line. My man's sagging back. That's crazy, bro. Hey, the confidence is out of this world, bro. I swear. I think players who have this type of confidence, I swear to God, bro. Like, I played against Curry. I played against some of these guys. Like, it's their confidence that makes them so good. I mean, you get the little bink bink between the legs, kind of get your rhythm, and then you just know it's cash. Is the front, to, the is the front to back, is that kind of like your read right there? When you go front to back with the uh, between the legs, is that your read kind of seeing what the defense is doing? Yeah, just to see uh, how they're playing me. If I could shoot it, I could drive it. Okay. And then look, look at my mouse. You see when my, he pointed at him, he obviously telling him, you think he telling him to back up? What were you hearing in this moment? Is he telling him to back up? Like, yo, like I back up, give him space. I know the coach knew I was going to shoot it. <laughs> the coach even knew it, bro. That's what's crazy. All right, look, and then look, I wanted to show you that to transition into this play, because this is a back-to-back -back, play. This is actually the play before, but you. this is what you end up doing. You hit him with a hezzy, mm. then right, right mm. finish. And it's just kind of like, this goes back to the, like the three sets up the, the layup, the layup sets up the three. Do you mm. see that a lot? I see you do this a lot. Yeah. Like you go into one and then you go into the next counter. Is that the next, was that your mindset going into the next play? Well, honestly, this play, I was going to shoot that one, but he jumped on it. So I had to go attack the rim. How did you make the read out, out of it? Like, like kind of like, because well, the other I ones. I kind of saw him like, like hesitant if he wanted to jump or not. And then he just, he just jumped. So the paint was wide open. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then a little up and under right hand, like when the defender was there. Yep. That's why when you can shoot the ball, especially like the way you can and with that range too, that's what it just makes guys so hard to guard. When they can score on all three levels, you you he, like the defender, the next play, he couldn't press up on him because he knows he's going to blow by him. And then he wants to give him enough space so he can still close out. But with your range, you can't really – I mean, it just makes it so much difficult. And I'm telling you, you see this stuff with Dame, you see this stuff with, with Steph, like they're just so hard to guard because they can shoot with so much range, man. Yeah, that's crazy right there at 14. All right, so we 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 talked a lot about, you know, the shooting, how far, the distance, but then we're going to get into more. more. This is against Team That. You got Jaden uh, right here, big time shot blocker and uh, as a low man. Well, he's not considered the low man. He kind of up a little bit. That's him right here, number 21. But let's just talk about this little pick and roll reject. I'm pretty sure that you do, actually. Actually, it wasn't a reject. But one thing, just talk about the read, and then I'll get into what I liked about it. Yeah, this, this game was uh, it was a tough one. They, they, they played 94 feet, so I knew he was going to, like, he didn't want me to go middle. So I had a little... I pause for a little bit and then go up. Okay. Yeah, like that's what I noticed. The pause. The pause was because you had a guy in the corner three. I know you can't see it, right? So you yeah. kind of pause a little bit. You do that too a little bit. You're really good at doing that. Like the little pause reaction. Like, so on the press up, what was the initial thought? 
Well, I knew I knew I could take him. So if the guy was gonna help even more, it was just a corner three. But you know, no team wants to give up the three. Yeah, exactly. Um, where did that come from too? Like even the pause, like, do you feel like pace is important for you with getting a lot of your buckets? Because like a lot of people play sped up, especially in 17s. The guys is pressing up on you. They want you actually to drive to probably force to Jaden because he's a really good shot blocker. Like, how were you able to make the, you know, the pause kind of a little freeze up? Is that something you've been working on? Like, what's the situation with that? I think the pause just come, it just came natural. The, my pace just came natural. And then just still working on it in the gym. So it just came a little easy. Okay. No, I rock with it. Okay. Situation, guys on your hip, reject action into the flotation device. Mm -hmm. Let's get into that. Let's talk about it off the start. Well, honestly, I knew I was going to take him left because there's no help on the left side. So then I just hit him with a little footer because he's a little smaller than me. Hey, you, you watch film with your pops, don't you? Yeah, every now and then. Yeah, you could tell. You could tell, like, to be so young, like, you know what you're looking at, you understand. And then I, for me as a guard, just watching you, um, you do a good job with your setups and then like your angles. A lot of kids your age, they just go one speed and they're just faster and stronger than people. They can get to the basket. But I thought you flexed on them, but you was fixing your your mask or your or your headband. <laughs> I fixed my mask. I broke my nose. Oh, okay, okay. I, I didn't know if he was talking crazy. I was like, okay, and we and we barking too. Let them know then. All right, but now your angles and your pace, like Jordan was saying, like. That's special, man, because I'm I'm telling you, that's that's stuff that even guys in college don't understand. You really don't understand angles and stuff until you get to the NBA, really. Is the rapid fire. And I like that. He said, nah, the homie not letting us <laughs> the homie not letting us swim the workouts. That's funny. We got a whole new hey yo. If people start telling me that, Jay, I'm coming after you. I'm telling you, I'll be like, hey yo, bro, like I gotta respect it, but. A lot more people ain't, ain't letting us feel workouts now because of Jay Crow. So if, if kids ain't letting you film the workouts no more, they just stop abruptly, it's because of Jason Crow. Perfect. <laughs> For sure. All right, yo. So look, let's get into the rapid fire. So we, we're going to give you a question, quick answer. That's it. And then we'll be finished. All right. Mm -hmm. So favorite basketball movie? Uh, About the Rim. Oh my God! I I know this is supposed to be rapid fire, but you gotta explain. Right <laughs> above the rim. <laughs> hey yo, I gotta give him points. <laughs> yo, I, I'm sorry, yo. All right, now we get to the fast one. That one threw me off guard. That one threw me off guard. All right, next one. LeBron or Kobe? Kobe. Favorite clothing brand? Nike. In and Out or Whataburger? In and Out. Favorite artist? Lil Baby. Favorite go-to move? Spin to a uh, midi jumper. Start bench cut. Phone, laptop, or video game council? Uh, I'll start phone, bench. No, I'll cut the, I'll cut the uh, game because I don't play the game like that. And then I'll bench the TV. Hold on. All right. So hold on. I'm, if I wish. Flawless victory. I want to, I would, if I had the applause, I would give you the applause because you went. Oh my God. He on X Games mode. The boy went crazy today. First off, let's go to the rapid fire questions. I asked you favorite clothing brand. This is how I know this guy's very marketable. He tells me Nike. He plays on the Nike circuit. So Nike, we need to get this man something going, bro. For sure. <laughs> and then. I asked what the go-to move was. You shocked me. Thought you was going to tell me the three-ball pull-up, you know, Steph Curry style. You say the midi. Is that from Paul Pierce? Is that part of Paul Pierce? Is that where the family ties is or what? What we got? A little something like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this swag gets crazy too, bro. The party never <laughs> ends. <laughs> yes, hey, I'm sir. a fan, man. I'm a fan now for sure. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, facts, bro. Nah, man. Hey, always love, bro. You know, you guys showed me love, too, when I was starting off in the high school scene. You and Pops, I love what you guys are doing.
keeping it in the fam, you playing at Linwood, creating a new culture for this youth. Because a lot of people need to see that you don't need to go and play with the top guys. You bring the top guys to you, and that's what y'all doing. Y'all want to stay title, so congratulations on that. But, man, really appreciate it. Love seeing you shine, bro. At the end of the day, you know, we out here in Cali doing the thing. I, I You know, I appreciate you for joining us, man. No, thank you. Yes, sir, my DI. Well, yo, appreciate it. Ray, you got something for us? Nah, man, that was great, man. I appreciate you. It's an honor. You are our first high school kid. Yep. I, I don't know if anyone's going to be able to top this episode, but uh, <laughs> best of luck to you. Keep grinding and keep listening to your dad, man. You got a bright future.